Hello people, I'm Jabby Koei, and we've got an interesting video here in front of us. It's called Why Bollywood's Harry Potter Was a Box Office Bomb by Austin McConnell. Before we go any further, please make sure to click on that link in the description below to the original. Give the original an upvote if you like the video that we're about to watch. If you found it intriguing or interesting, even if you didn't like it, do give the original an upvote and maybe consider subscribing to his channel. So we're going to check this out together. Why Bollywood's Harry Potter Was a Box Office Bomb. If you haven't already, do me a big favor. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. So what would happen if Bollywood, the loud and lavish center of Indian cinema, decided to make their own version of one of the world's most magical franchises? This is the story of the Hindi Harry Potter. While the books might have been bestsellers, it was only after The Wizarding World hit the silver screen that Harry Potter skyrocketed into a multimedia mainstay that would eventually rake in billions of dollars. During oh, its wow. original I didn't theatrical it was run, billion. Potter mania ripped through the world. The movies became instant classics, broke all kinds of box office records, and ruled popular culture. So that by 2003, Harry Potter was at five books and three movies, with hype at an all-time high. Meanwhile, in India, the movie biz was booming too. Productions were starting to adopt more Hollywood sensibilities, and TV studio Creative Eye Limited wanted to be at the forefront of the industry's next chapter by going digital. Just a few years earlier, George Lucas had pioneered shooting high-definition video in lieu of film, and the tech had just arrived overseas. At a time when most Bollywood movies had budgets of, well, under $1 million, this was a game changer and gave Creative Eye the opportunity to produce a visual extravaganza that could become the country's next big cultural phenomenon. So working with audiovisual company JVC, they planned to Jesus. produce- so sorry that it was so bright just now. I just noticed, looked up because I'm like, it feels bright. And I look at my camera, I'm like, that's really bright. I'm sorry, you guys. First ever 3D movie. Don't picture James Cameron's avatar. This was the early odds. We're talking old school red and blue lenses. For the first time, India could actually make movies designed for this. Creative Eye figured combining the gimmick with a suitable family-friendly story ripped from the West would spell box office gold in their neck of the woods. So they quickly hired a couple of writers, including the auspiciously named J.K. Nirmal, to throw together a Hindi version of the Harry Potter story entitled Abracadabra, The School of Magic. The script lifted a ton of elements from the original Potter pictures. A young boy is sent to a spellbinding castle to learn magic. There he befriends two quirky classmates, a shaggy groundskeeper has a rival. The movie would feature kooky characters, magic wands, a forbidden forest with creepy spiders. I could go on. Don't even get me started about the invisibility pills. But the movie would also smartly adapt much of this source material for its own culture. Gone were the British-isms, replaced with a heart unashamedly Hindi. Broomsticks were mm. traded out for magic carpets. Quidditch okay. became basically flying soccer with a flag instead of a ball. The story's spells and enchantments would borrow heavily from Hinduism, the fashion. You know what? The carpet actually makes more sense than the broomsticks. I know broomsticks are related to witches and that's why you would do that, but the carpet just seems a lot more practical. If you're going to have a magic anything, I'd rather have a magic carpet than a broomstick. You know, fun fact, <laughs> there was a video that we just put out actually. The broomsticks are uncomfortable. They're wildly uncomfortable. Why would you ever do that? I suppose if it's like magical and whatever, perhaps there's a magical way that it sustains your weight in such a way that you're not putting all of your crotch and whatnot on your butt into that spot on the broomstick. More than likely, it's gravity. You know, it's you're. It does, no, that doesn't look comfortable. Whereas a carpet, I can imagine would. And it's kind of like surfing or skateboarding, you know, but in the air. Flag instead of a ball, the story's spells and enchantments would borrow heavily from Hinduism. The fashion and story themes would maintain the country's cinematic staples. The story also took some unique liberties, like for instance, instead of a wise and kind-hearted Dumbledore, this school's headmistress would be a straight up villain out to kill the main character's father. There's a Casper the Friendly ghost style companion okay. to replace Hedwig, a random creepy Zubat looking thing. And of course it wouldn't be Bollywood without the singing and dancing. Okay. Is that who I think it is?
Abracadabra was written as a huge production, requiring a massive cast, tons of elaborate costumes, original music with its own choreography, and hundreds of visual effect shots to bring- Yo, the headmistress or whatever, she fine. I'm sorry, but she could be my villain any day of the week. Shots ...to bring the movie's 3D magic to life. To pull it all off, director Dheeraj Kumar knew the picture would need solid financing, so he turned to a method that Hollywood had spent the past decade perfecting. Product placement. Oh. Brand integration in Indian cinema wasn't uncommon. Since the mid-60s, production studios would occasionally use it to cut costs. Ed Glazier's How the World Remade Hollywood notes that a single brand deal could pay anywhere from five to six figures, and that Coca-Cola paid a whopping $670,000 for placement in the 2001 Bollywood movie Memories. But director Kumar mm. didn't want well-known international brands. Instead, preferring to partner with Camlin, an Indian stationery company, and Tarl G, which produced oh, what? those biscuits. It'd be kind of like having an American-produced movie featuring Crayola and Nabisco. The problem with brand integrations okay. is, of course, how to integrate. Hold on, what was the first brand? Camlin. Okay, that's a coloring company? That's interesting. Parley G. It'd be kind of like having an American-produced movie featuring Crayola and Nabisco. The problem with brand integrations is, of course, how to integrate them. The writers needed a way to put the two companies' products into the story without breaking believability. So, how'd they do it? They broke believability. <laughs> Abracadabra I was about to say, I mean... Feature two subplots, each involving Willy Wonka-esque golden ticket hunts, okay. in which both companies would exist in-world and offer scholarships to the School of Magic as prizes. This idea could have come from the fact that Hollywood was in the middle of producing the infamous Charlie and the Chocolate Factory reboot at the time. Abracadabra's main character would inexplicably find both of these golden tickets. It's literally the same side story. Twice. Just different logos. But hey, our hero can pull it off because magic. There are other not-so-subtle ad spots in the movie. When fake Harry is getting picked on by school bullies, there's a Popeye's spinach moment where he gains super strength thanks to eating a Parl G biscuit. And while the students are learning to cast spells in class in one particular scene, they're instructed to levitate Camlin-colored pencils. Not to mention that throughout the movie, the brands are constantly featured on screen, <laughs> our hero sometimes literally just stopping at a TV to watch a complete commercial. While it's all a bit too much for most moviegoers, it's hard to fault the director. They've got to pay for those 3D glasses somehow. With brand deals locked in, the script finished, and a budget of just over a million dollars secured, Abracadabra rolled into production with high expectations. It would feature some of the biggest names in Bollywood, boast several big musical numbers, a plot that seemed to have everything that was popular at the time, and a novel viewing format to pique public interest. In short, this was going to be India's big thing. As the movie approached release day, director Kumar launched a massive marketing campaign throughout the country. Toys, coloring books, all kinds of merchandise featuring the movie's characters. The creative Eye pulled out all the stops. I feel like I need to watch this now. And theaters, setting up publicity booths for cast members. They hung up advertisements in schools, wow. arcades, libraries, all in an effort to catch the eyes of kids everywhere. For all intents and purposes, Abracadabra was too big to fail. It would almost certainly launch Bollywood's new era of big box office blockbusters, and so certain were the producers of the movie's immediate success that the flick's end credits even promised a sequel. And on oh, December 24, man. 2004, Abracadabra, The School of Magic hit theaters. But stunningly, with a budget of over a million dollars, the movie would need to take the number one spot in India's box office and hold it for several months. But opening weekend found the film barely pulling in 75 wow. grand. Word of mouth was not good. While kids might have enjoyed the movie, parents found most of the characters off-putting. The 3D experience gimmicky and annoying to sit through for over two hours, and the shoehorned product placement certainly didn't do the movie any favors 
taking the audience completely out of the experience. While having fully rendered and realized animated characters like the Friendly Ghost were certainly impressive at the time for a Bollywood production, many found the actual performances of said characters annoying and at times unbearable. Moviegoers also found that the pacing of the first half dragged far too much, no doubt hindered by plot lines designed purely for poorly integrated advertising, and while the choreography and music was enjoyable, the occasionally slapstick and surface-level humor and comedy failed to fully win audiences over. While certainly loud and flashy, the movie lacked soul. By the next weekend, word was out that Abracadabra was a dud. Even the 3D gimmick did little to inspire repeat viewers. Fewer and fewer people bought tickets, and by the end of the movie's theatrical run, only a fraction of the budget wow. had been made back. Somehow, oh my somewhere, God. this surefire hit was a total non-starter. And Bollywood. Yo, very- that sucks. That really sucks. That kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Can you imagine trying to helm that, like, be the tip of the spear, helm this thing? You put all of this energy and focus into, like, and you manage to pull it off above all odds, and it only rakes in not even a tenth of of what it costs to make it. Wow. <sighs> That really sucks. You know, I was briefly glancing over some of the comments of the video before watching it, and there were some people who were like, oh, this is like part of my childhood. I remember this. It was a lot of fun when I was a kid, etc." I'm sure the movie's not good. I'm sure it's terrible, but still, like, you, you always... <laughs> You know, you always hope it, it succeeds. And they even like had ambitions for a part two. And it just, can you imagine being a kid? And you're like, oh my gosh, a part two? I cannot wait for part two. It's never realized. It never comes to fruition. Became an infamous flop. Creative Eye Limited went back to TV. Okay. I am not well versed in the ongoings of what cinema was like in the early 2000s or whenever exactly this had come out. Obviously, Harry Potter kind of took the world by storm, so presumably Harry Potter was in India, right? If that's the case, that means cinema was already quite global, which means Western cinema was had already made its way into Indian theaters for quite a while. So with that in mind, the audiences probably w- were able to see something like, hey, look, there's Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers, and then... Here's this Harry Potter knockoff. Wouldn't it just be Bollywood to be borrowing someone else's idea and remaking it, right? I can see why the audiences weren't receptive to it. Can you imagine had this taken off? Like, eventually it probably would have evolved into something much more palatable, much more interesting. I don't know, better all around. They just went back to TV after that. They just won and done and gave up. It's just sad. I understand that this is like amusing and whatever, and it's all oh, look look back at this, but it's, it's such a depressing story. <laughs> And now we're all depressed together. Oh, goodness. Well, anyway, that was a cool uh, little bit of education on the Indian Harry Potter that I didn't know about. Maybe it would be a grand waste of time to sit and watch it, you know, but I can't help my curiosity. Maybe it'd be a good drunken movie. What do you say? Comment below. I'm Jabby Kawai. Peace out.